Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Let's talk about Tesla and Kathy Wood and Ark Invest's latest projections for Tesla. So I've already done a reaction to these, but right now I want to go into this a little bit deeper and show you Elon Musk's response as well as uh, share some commentary with you on where she's being really bullish very bullish and and where she's actually being a little bit more conservative and I'm going to compare some of this to the way that I value companies so uh, first thing you have to remember that if you're watching this video and uh, you're you're thinking that Tesla is going to stop growing in uh, even by even in this decade by 2030 uh, I personally want to make it clear that I think we have a difference of opinion here uh, and, and that's not a bad thing but personally when you hear me talk about Tesla I just want to be clear that for me Tesla is a company that I believe is going to be on a growth trajectory, of course, different rates of growth. This next decade is going to be pretty rapid growth uh, with, with more rapid growth coming once we actually scale the development of manufacturing. So think about that. We've got to get the development of creating factories to scale. That's not at scale, right? Once we get like the copy and paste model for factories to scale, Oh my gosh, then we see the exponential growth curve, right? So that, in my opinion, could happen in 25, 26, 27. And then we copy and paste these factories in different continents and states around the world. And, and now Tesla really sees that exponential growth curve. And for me, 2030 is really going to be part of that exponential growth curve where maybe are we midway through that curve? You know, where are we in that curve? I personally don't see Tesla slowing that exponential growth curve until at the very least 2035. Now it's, it's very difficult to project far out and this is why sometimes there is a bias towards using closer projections. In fact, personally, in the Stocks and Psychology of Money group, I generally recommend only projecting out four or five years, which is actually what ARK Invest has done. Now I have in my recent estimates gone a little bit further on Tesla, but that's because I do believe we have this, this delay and when we can really see a ramp at Tesla because it takes so long to get manufacturing to that copy and pasteable state. So if, if, if somebody's watching this thinking, ah, oh, we're going to be fully electrified in 2030 and, and Tesla sales are going to decline, uh, I, I think we have a pretty fundamental difference of opinion there because this electrification process is going to be very, very slow. I mean, Biden is like, oh, we're going to electrify the entire U.S. fleet. Bro, you just let the U.S. government give a deal for the USPS vehicles to Oshkosh, who's probably going to do like 90% gas vehicles. And those vehicles vehicles are going to be good for another 15 years. Like, you got to be kidding me, right? And this is not to be political. It's just like this. It shows you the practical implications versus the vision, right? It, it goes slower than people expect. And I'm going to show you Elon Musk's response here as well. But first, I really want to dive into uh, the projections here. So what I've done is I've uh, taken this, this uh, you know, the Kathy Wood projections here and uh, thrown them onto a very simple uh, spreadsheet here. So what we've got is her base case here on the left, her bull case here on the right. Uh, and then what I did is I actually added, I did, I took Kathy Wood's uh, base case scenario for, I should put 2025 here, for 2025. I'm taking your base case scenario and I'm adding energy and services uh, to her base case scenario, uh, which she does use a higher average selling price than I do. I use 42,000, but I'm going to go ahead and go with her 45,000 uh, average selling price per vehicle. And personally, I assume that includes autonomous revenue, which given that she has zero for autonomous here, that's fair. That's why I'm using this. I'm not going with her bull case scenario, which she thinks is very likely. She thinks there's a 50% likelihood that we're going to have this robo taxi network killing it in 2025, which is really, really incredible. And, and it explains why they're bullish here. But uh, a few, a couple issues that I have. Uh, the first issue that I really want to hit uh, and uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to erase this really quick here because this is all my scribble from last time here. So let's go ahead and quickly just erase this. A couple issues that I have uh, initially or, or like reactionally here after I've put some more thinking into it. Well, which I guess in that case it wouldn't really be reactionally. <laughs> oh, and quick note. This is her 25% uh, chance of having a bear case scenario expectation. Uh, I'm calling this base, which is a little confusing. So I'm going to I'm gonna on the spreadsheet update this to uh, base slash bear. <laughs> okay. So anyway, base slash bear here. Uh, one of the concerns that I have is right here, this electric vehicle gross margin of 40%. Uh, honestly, I think that is, it is way, 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 way too high. Uh, auto manufacturing is not exactly really, really high profit. Now, I know she does have some human driven ride hailing in here. So maybe she thinks the margin is going to push up because of autonomy. But 40% for electric vehicle gross margins, that's nuts. That's bringing $4 of every, uh, you know, $10 to, to EBITDA. 
uh, or, or sorry, to, to uh, gross margin here, EBITDA a little less. That's when you, EBITDA is when you include operating expenses like research and development, uh, sales and general administration and that. But uh, for, for gross profit margin, uh, 40%, I think this is relatively high, mostly because Elon Musk's long-term vision was getting to 30%. Uh, and, and so they're pushing this up to 40%. Now, maybe that's because they're trying to include some of that, that FSD revenue, which obviously flicking the switch and allowing cars to have FSD uh, is is like a you know 95% profit margin business. But uh, she does also have a bullish average selling price here, right? So when you combine these two, these two numbers here are huge. Like if I go into my uh, spreadsheets and, and I just change the average selling price or the margin, the end result of the price is vastly different. Uh, like it, it goes crazy. And, and let me just show you that to prove that to you. So when I go into my bull case, for example, and I go to uh, expense margin, like I'm at 28% for, for sales. Uh, so in other words, revenues on vehicles, I take 72% off for expenses, which is a profit margin of 28%. She's at 40% on this. If I take, so my 2030 bull case scenario where I think the share price would be 6,000, if I put Kathy's margin in here of, uh, you know, 40% profit, which would mean the expense is only 60%, which is way, way lower, and we go up here and change this to $45,000 per vehicle, we literally double, we more than double the potential share price here to 12,700. That's insane. Uh, like 12,700, it might, I mean, it could happen. It could happen. It just, it sounds insane right now. And don't get me wrong. I'm not calling Kathy insane. I'm just saying like, because I, I love ARK Invest, right? I don't want to make that very clear. I'm just saying this, like what you're, I'm going to show you something that's very conservative in a moment, but I, I just want you to be very clear. Like I might be very, very conservative in my opinion on my base case scenario. I think I'm very conservative, which I know some people are going to roll their eyes at. Like, Kevin, there's no way you were even conservative on that. Fine. I'm a Tesla bull. Okay. So I think my estimate or my conservative estimate for Tesla keeps them at around 28% margin and keeps that average selling price per vehicle, including autonomy down at 42. That's my version of being conservative. But I use a much more bullish price to earnings multiple, right? I use 70 in 2030 because I think there's still going to be so much growth. I'm not including all of the potential other verticals that still exist for Tesla. So uh, I'm not even including all the revenue sources, but I'm being very conservative on, uh, in my opinion, again, my opinion, on, on margin and the other items, but giving a higher multiple. Look, if you go to my, uh, for example, my base case scenario for 2030, which is $3,000, and you cut my PE ratio uh, from 70 to 35, the price cuts in half, right? But I can fix that by just going up here, basically, and saying, well, I want to use Kathy's margin and uh, Kathy's revenue per vehicle here. Oops, there we go. Uh, let's go to revenue per vehicle, 45,000. And look at that, I get right back to 3,000. So in other words, where Kathy is conservative on PE ratio, which I'll show you in a moment, I'm conservative on margin. And where she's bullish on margin, I'm, uh, uh, I'm bullish on PE, right? So we've kind of flip-flopped, but we're kind of arriving at the same spot, which is funny because it's, it's two totally independent analyses. Like, I doubt they're looking at my analysis, right? I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe they look at social media, which if, if ARK is watching this, please come on my channel. Let's have a conversation about this, <laughs> uh, about Tesla in the future. I would, I would love to host any analyst from ARK. Uh, but anyway, let's, let's, so this is important to know about uh, where Kathy is, is very bullish and where she's, uh, you know, maybe more conservative. Uh, and to show you that conservativeness, with her numbers, her base bull, uh, or sorry, base slash bear scenario here of revenues of around $257 billion in 2025, with her anticipated margins, which very, very, again, she's aggressive here, she gets to some big net revenue numbers. $82 billion in her base bear, 156 almost, it's almost double in her bull case scenario. This is such massive revenue that it lets her use a small multiple of just 20 times future earnings in her base slash bear case scenario or 28 times future earnings for her bull case scenario and get to these price targets. But that's, again, I showed you the difference of where she's conservative, where she's bullish, where I'm conservative, where I'm bullish. Ultimately, we kind of come to a similar price, except she's also much earlier than I am. And this is where we have to bring up Elon Musk's concern. 
Uh, so, and, and this is collaborative here, right? This is not Kevin versus Kathy. I think we're both on the same page here. But take a look at this. So let's let's look at Elon Musk's response. So right here, you've got Kathy Wood uh, saying here, the equity market does not seem to have ever discounted half percent, one percent, two percent, or three percent yields on the ten-year bonds. Okay, so let me explain that. What she's basically saying is, when we have P/E ratios of 20 to 25 on the S&P 500, she associates this number with a yield of four to five percent on the 10 year treasury. And the way she accomplishes that is she takes just basically a dollar divided by the multiple of, of 25. Okay, that's 4% or by 20, that's 5%. So in other words, when you hear uh, S&P 500 PE ratio 25, she says, well, that's similar to 4% expected yields in, in the market. It does not exactly have to be tied to the 10, but that's what she's talking about here. And she says, look, we've been stuck at 25 even since the 10-year treasury yields have declined from 6% to like zero. So Kathy's making this argument that, hey, it's time to maybe have a higher valuation on the S&P. Now, one of the things Kathy doesn't tell you here is that half of the companies in the S&P 500, well, maybe not half, somewhere between a quarter to half of the companies in the S&P 500 are not tech companies. There, there are cigarette companies in here, there are oil companies in here, there are recovery stocks in here, right? So those can certainly anchor your PEs down. But maybe she's just basically saying, look, broadly, not necessarily just the S&P 500, but broadly, P.E. ratios or multiples could be higher, right? This 20 to 25x could be higher uh, or, or could correspond to a higher yield. Uh, so in other words, if yields are 2 or 3%, well, then in that case, wait a minute. Uh, if we go 1 divided by 2, we could see P.E. ratios of up to 50 uh, we could go uh, one divided by three, we could see PE ratios of up to 33, essentially, is, is the way she's referring to this. Uh, now, and, and I know I'm, I'm speeding up this explanation a little bit, so let me just bottom line this. Basically, Kathy Wood is saying, hey, I think the market is still undervaluing the fact that interest rates are so low and earnings multipliers could be a lot higher than people think that they, they should be long term. Uh, and, and then she says, oh, yes, I forgot to mention how scarce exponential growth opportunities are, are likely to become as artificial intelligence creates more winner take most opportunities in autonomous taxi networks. All right. There's actually like so educated in this. There's a lot to unpackage there. I'm going to simplify this and keep it short and concise. Basically, once Tesla figures out how to copy and paste these factories around the world, there aren't going to be many Teslas who are copy and pasting factories like that. And so whoever can master copy and pasting the manufacturing systems, which is one thing that I like about Lucid is that they've, they've got a plant up. They've already got their second location and their expansion plans. Uh, you know, we, we want to see that actually come to fruition. We want to see these vehicles come off the line, obviously. I, I know there are a lot of Tesla people who are like, Kevin, don't even get me started on Lucid. I hate Lucid. But look, there are a lot of Tesla people who are like, I'll give Lucid a chance too, right? Proof will be in the pudding. But the point is, who, whatever companies, I don't care what it is. It could be ABC C company in the future, ABC, whatever, who cares? It could be some other rando company. Who point is whoever can scale that manufacturing uh, is going to be able to take advantage of, in, in my opinion, and possibly if I could stretch it here to Kathy Woods' opinion, these exponential growth opportunities, not just from manufacturing, but in AI. And that's where you win. Because the more your vehicles you get out there, the more you get to take advantage of the exponential growth of AI, enabling full self-driving and taxi networks. And she's so bullish on, on this, and that's why she shows her numbers are really, really excited about Tesla, because she thinks, hey, this is a winner take most. Now, Elon Musk actually replied to this, and he kind of threw a little bit of cold water on this. He said, when vast amounts of manufacturing are needed, like I said, when you, had, when you need all of this copy and pasting, which you do need, remember, robo-taxis are not software. They are actual vehicles, right? Uh, this slows down rate of introduction, so maybe more like winner takes a quarter. Still great. Uh, yeah, actually, even though Elon kind of just threw a little bit of cold water on Kathy's statement, what he said actually aligns with Kathy, Kathy in it's insanely bullish. Because look at my 2030 bull case scenario. Look at this. I wrote, of the world orders, Toyota has a 14.3% market share. And in my bull... Case scenario here, my bullish thesis with that $6,000 price in 2030, 
I said, what if Tesla takes 20%? Okay, Elon just said, mm, let's do, <laughs> let's take 25% potentially of uh, the market share. So 25%. Uh, of 80 would be about 20 million vehicles per year. That would bring my bull case to about 7,600, up from my bull case of about 6,100. So Elon's actually throwing a little bit of cold water there, but in the end, arriving at the same bullish thesis as Kathy. So look at what you've got. You've got Elon's opinions, you've got Kevin's opinions, and you've got Kathy's opinions. We're all pointing the arrow in the same freaking direction. So this is not like, oh, Kevin thinks Kathy's wrong or whatever. No, 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 no. We are all pointing the arrow in the same direction. We're all just trying to make guesses as to what the future is going to look like. And we're going down different paths to get there. And I think everybody can, can learn from everybody else's input, probably me more from them than from me. I'm not gonna pat myself on the back and say that one dude has the researching capacity of, of you know, a, an organization with 40 bill under assets. I'm just a YouTuber, right? Uh, but uh, if you do like my perspectives on the way that I teach things, Keep in mind, we are expiring, finally this week, we are officially fully expiring and raising the prices on the program's link, link down below. So that coupon code will expire. So if you find this helpful, consider sharing, but also consider checking out the coupon code. It's 38% off, uh, gets you lifetime access to the lectures in my programs on building your wealth. You can bundle up with them. You also get me personally live and private live streams where I answer your questions uh, directly. So if you found this helpful, share, subscribe, check out the courses down below. And folks, thank you so very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.